Okay, so I'm going to review the third and final movie in the Gates of Hell trilogy, which is House by the Cemetery, which was released in 1981. So this must have been made a few months after um, The Beyond. Uh, this, uh, <coughs> I actually had some experience with this movie beforehand. I remember, um, years ago, uh, my dad inherited some movies from my uncle, I guess, and, uh, because my uncle, he don't really know where it came from, and we're, we think it's probably from my uncle, because he collect, like, horror movies and obscure movies and stuff like that. Well, my stepmom was watching it, and it was the scene where, um, Bob was escaping out of the, um, basement, and I was like, ooh, that's pretty interesting, but I never, I kind of left it out of my mind until years later when I was, um, some horror groups on Facebook, and they kept talking about this movie, and I was like, and I saw the creature in there, and I was like, oh yeah, I, I seen part of that movie, so I was like, because last year, I started watching Italian horror movies, so that kind of like, I was like, well, you know, Lucio Fulci and Dario Gento are like the famous ones, so I'll watch their movies first, and then I saw this one, and I was like, oh yeah, you know, kind of clicked with me, but anyways, um, this one is pretty, the plot's pretty simple, but it's about this family who, uh, moves into this house where a professor previously, or doctor previously died, he killed his mistress and then hung himself, or not hung himself, he commits suicide, and, um, they don't know why, but they're like, oh, we want you to move in this house, and the father's like, he, the doctor, he was obsessed with the doctor's work, and he wanted to figure out what happened, so they move into the house, and they start experiencing weird stuff going on, and you know, like, there's weird stuff going, like, the basement sealed up, can't get in there, uh, they're finding, like, tombstone, they found, like, a tombstone in the floor, and they don't know why, why that's there, uh, or two stones in the floor. There's two of them. They don't know why that's there. Um, and then you know people start dying, so they're like are going missing. They're like, hmm, so what's going on? And then they find out that uh, well, there's a a little girl. They have a son named Bob, and there's this little girl that like kind of appears, pops up everywhere. You figure out that she's a ghost, and she's kind of like telling Bob, oh, you can't. You know, you don't go there. Don't get out the house. You know, you're all gonna die in there and that. He, she's like the harbinger for him. You know, he's trying to tell his parents, but they won't listen. But they find out that, uh, there was a scientist that lived there during the turn of the century who was performing these experiments on people. And then he killed his whole family, so now his body resides in the house, and his spirit's unleashed. <sighs> That's basically the plot of the movie. Um, <sighs> shoot, sorry. This movie is more probably fam more famous. It's famous for its gore effects, and it's probably more famous for its bad dubbing, especially with the sun. Whoever they got to dub the son's voice is freaking horrible. I, oh my god, it was awful. I mean, after a while, you kind of got, get used to it, but <laughs> when they were telling me, oh, that is, they're like, trust me, they said that son's voice is so annoying and <laughs> the dubbing's bad. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, they're just joking. They're like, you know, they can't be that bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Cause all he does is whine and complain. All he goes is, mommy, mommy, mommy. And I was like, oh my god. But, um, then there's a scene where the father's talking to the, uh, the, the mother, the husband and wife. The husband's talking to his wife. And, you know, she's, I guess she has depression or something. And, uh, the father, cause she's complaining that like, there's something weird going on in the house and stuff. And the husband goes, this is what really, he literally says, he says, 
have you been taking the pills that the baker's been prescribing you? And you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and you're like, you know, someone did not do a good translation for this movie. Yeah, because it's dubbed, like I said. Um, one of the most, uh, one of the most famous death scenes in the movie is at the beginning where, uh, the doctor's mistress gets murdered. And it kind of reminds me off of, uh, Psycho 2. But she gets a knife stabbed through the back of her head like this and the blade comes out of her mouth. And it reminds me of the death from Psycho 2 where Lilia Loomis or Crane, I think it's, yeah, Lilia Crane, she gets stabbed through the mouth with a knife and it, the blade pops out the back of her head. But I think this movie came out before Psycho 2. But anyways, yeah, it just reminds me of that. There's another scene where a character gets uh stabbed by a poker and she's like really bloody she gets stabbed to death by a poker and then like Freud's nine drags the body off. Um the uh makeup effects of the Freud's sign kinda looks cheesy. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, it looks cheesy. Like, trust me, this thing does not look scary to me at all. Maybe if I was a kid and saw it, yeah. But I was like, oh my god, that was horrible. <laughs> but I know I don't want to piss off anyone who likes this movie. This is not my favorite one. But it does kind of keep that dream white quality to it. And like with the, um, the house looks really creepy, foreboding, like an Adam Sandler house. It's decrepit. Like, you know, someone, it looks like something someone should be living in, like this creaky floorboards. Or, Dusty in there. It doesn't look like someone should be living in there. Um, one of the things that kind of like set me off, and not set me off, but kind of like maybe uneasy in this movie is like when they discover that there's tombstone, that there's graves in the house. Because like when she's sweeping, she finds like um a tombstone stone, like it's laid flat, and then she's like. And I had a dream before when I was a kid where um I was in this house and I found this grave like in the middle of the house. And I was just like, oh my god. So that's so creepy. It's like I had a dream like that. And that, that thought always scared me. Like how about if you moved in a house and there was a grave in there? You know. But I know I didn't do a really good job with this review. But yeah. um. It's not my favorite, but, I mean, it's still worth a watch. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Oh yeah, there's this, some of the scouts in the movie. Like this. Um, yeah, like, like I said, it's not my favorite, but, it's still worth a watch. Um, but anyways, that's my review. <laughs>